There are just so many reasons why people are choosing tiny house living. And one of them is a desire to reconnect with our environment, to get out into incredible places like this and reconnect with nature. And that is exactly what's happened with this next beautiful tiny home parked up here in the British Columbian wilderness. Hi Jess, how's it going? Good, thanks. How are you? Good, thank you. Lovely to meet you. You as well. This here is such a beautiful tiny home. Thank you. So what was it that actually inspired you to go tiny? So I had been raised on a hobby farm. My parents uh, have always raised their own food and animals. So living a sustainable life was really important to me. And then I just kind of kept being in places in my life that didn't make sense for me to like own my own home or anything like that. So then when the tiny home movement started coming through, it just really aligned and clicked for me that that was what I needed to do. So what attracted me to tiny house living, I think was really around the self-sustainability piece. And as I've always kind of been more of a transient person, being able to pick up and go where I needed to be was really important to me, but also just having a smaller footprint. And just, I really think it comes down to essentially living in nature and I feel so close to nature when I'm living in a tiny home. And I think slow living is just the way forward for myself and for the perspective that I hold on the world and being able to just be more sustainable. Well, the aesthetic of this home really is quite extraordinary. It's a little bit unusual as well. Can you talk to me about where the inspiration for the design came from? Yeah, so I really wanted to emphasize on raw elements. Um, natural building structures and I know this is definitely wooden but I've spent quite a bit of time in Mexico so I kind of wanted to like recreate this like deserty feel in Canada so pulling elements from both areas was really important to me so I kind of like had this vision of this like if you were to rock up to like a dusty mezcal bar in the middle of nowhere and it was just an oasis this would be what you would see. I think we are probably as far away right now as you can get from a dusty mezcal bar I mean, I've got some inside though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I love the look. And for a second, let's just talk about this parking spot because this is probably one of the most idyllic locations to park a tiny house that I've ever seen. Yeah, I feel so fortunate to be here and being on this creek is just so beautiful. I don't have water right now, so I'm pumping water from the creek and it's absolutely beautiful, delicious water. Um, yeah, so it's really allowed me to do exactly what I want to do and living closer to nature. And of course, living in a tiny house, one of the things that I think we're really encouraged to do in tiny homes is to actually step outside into nature. So it's lovely to have all this right on your doorstep. It's so magical. I feel so grateful. There's just mornings, I mean, I, I have to get up and start my generator so that always gets me out of the house. But there's many mornings that I'm just happy to kind of go and sit by the creek and just enjoy. So you're operating on a generator here. You're not utilizing solar or anything right now. So that's the plan. It wasn't my plan in the immediate. It was kind of like a three-year plan for me to move towards solar. I kind of blew my budget on my house. So yeah, I was supposed to be set up with power for the first while and then work towards that, but power isn't here. So right. I've been running a generator and I've actually quite successfully tested several different generators. So I feel like I'm kind of confident about generator knowledge now. <laughs> Got that dialed in. Yeah. And how does that actually work out for you just running off a generator? Does that mean that sort of you'll run it for a period of time and is that charging batteries or are you having to run the generator almost always to keep the house powered? Yeah, I, I only just run it for a little bit, just enough to keep my fridge going really. And what size is this tiny home? It's just 20 feet. Just 20 feet? Just 20 feet. <laughs> That's really interesting because I think the way that the wood and the metal cladding are sort of breaking up the design of the house and the different pitch in the roof line, I would have guessed that this is actually larger than 20 feet. Yeah, and they did this cool thing where they bumped out the back, so a lot of my utilities and services are kind of in that little bump out, so you don't lose any extra space, which we know is so important with a tiny home. Well, I definitely love what you've done on the exterior of the home and I am very curious to see inside. Can we check it out? Absolutely. Thank you. This is beautiful. Yeah, thank you. I can see immediately 
you've got a lot of storage in here. I know, it's funny. It's really true what they say about build a shelf and you'll find something to put on it. So I've really tried hard to not put things on every shelf. And there's just so much storage in here, honestly. I don't know what to do with all of it. Were you a minimalist to begin with or is this something that you've really had to work on? You know, I've actually moved around a lot in my life. So I've always been kind of transient. <laughs> and so being able to pick things up and leave when I change jobs or whatever was important to me. And so I think that minimalistic lifestyle kind of like fell in with being able to be free to move when you need to. Yeah, and you still actually have to travel quite a lot with your work, don't you? I'm a social worker and so I do travel social work where I'm flying four times a month. I work one week on, one week off, which has been really beautiful to allow me to finish my master's in counseling. So moving forward, I'm really looking forward to doing more like eco-psychology type work with people and really recreating the importance of how important sustainable living is. So talk to me about the design of the house. What were the things in here that were really important for you to have? Mm -hmm. I think the big thing for me was around aesthetics to start, um, but then in terms of like actual logistics that was really important was kitchen. Kitchen is huge for me. I cook a lot of my own food and so being able to have like a really nice kitchen and space for prep and all that kind of thing was super important. I also knew that it wasn't realistic for me to have a second bed or a second loft in here. So the way the couch is built, it's deep enough that once you take off all my pillows, it's a single bed there. So that was really my two big things. And then of course, going back to aesthetics, that was kind of my big thought with living more sustainably is that you can actually do it quite beautifully. It doesn't have to be like some cabin in the woods. <laughs> Very true. It definitely has a wonderful and homey feeling in here. And let's talk first of all about this part of the house. Very comfortable looking couch and it looks like you've got a lot of storage in there too. So there's the two drawers that pull out and then also this other piece here flips up and then there's another piece on the side over there that also flips up. So it's Again, I'm not going to say it's more storage than I need because I'm grateful to have it, but there's a lot of storage in here. You've got the storage shelf up here as well, and I see that it's not really being used for storage. It's totally just decorative up there. Yeah, it's taken quite a lot to pare things down, but it just, energetically, it feels way better to not have clutter everywhere. And then moving on from the lounge here, we've got your stairwell. Again, lots of storage built in, some books. You've even got a washer dryer built in there. Yeah, I do. I have not used it yet, but it is here. <laughs> Problems with having to haul water from the river, right? Yeah, exactly. Now, looking at this kitchen, I can absolutely see that this is a design of somebody that loves to cook. You've yeah. prioritized a lot of space in this relatively small home to the kitchen, haven't you? Yeah, and it doubles as a workspace as well. So this is where my master's degree happened, pretty much. But it, yeah, it's huge for a tiny home and I'm so grateful for it because it does really allow me to eat quite well. Before I moved into a tiny home, I was living in a motor home for a year and talk about an inefficiently designed layout for sure. So eating healthy was not easy. Like you can try and force yourself to eat healthy, but prepping in a space that's super small is not realistic. And the design looks quite functional as well because you've sort of gone for this galley style where you've got the sink on one side and then your oven on the other. Yeah, so there is also more like prep space over here or more. It's kind of turned into my like pantry space, but I also have this amazing pantry here that slides out, um, which is just more storage. Mostly vitamins right now, apparently, so. <laughs> yeah, I just, I can't say enough about this kitchen design being exactly the fit that I wanted. And this window opens up fully, um, and so the plan is, is to actually put a bar outside that'll pop up so that people can sit there and you can just use it as a pass-through. Great idea. Yeah. And then right out the kitchen window, you just have this incredibly idyllic view of the river. That is really quite something, huh? Yeah, I feel so fortunate. This little chunk of land wasn't actually available when I first came and viewed the property. And then by complete luck or chance, I should say, I ended up with it. And it's just been super dreamy to have it for sure. And then I'm guessing through there, we've got your bathroom. Yeah. 
so the shower for me I really wanted to recreate this kind of outdoor shower look that you see in a lot of really beautiful tropical places so having that kind of like wood grain tile and of course plants in the shower was a nice element that I wanted to see happen in my home absolutely and with the placement of that window there it must really be like showering outside totally yeah having that window open definitely um, makes it feel like you're right there great and then composting toilet as well yep and I absolutely love it it's amazing in terms of composting toilets like super low maintenance and it pretty much does everything for you it's fantastic and then upstairs we've got the sleeping loft yeah after you this is a very cozy loft space. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the king size bed is a bit ridiculous, but it was something that I had when I had in my bigger home. And so I was like adamant that once you sleep in a king size bed, it's really hard to go down in size. But now that I have it up here, I'm like, okay, it's a little bit excessive. But nice that you knew what was important to you and managed to find a way to fit it in. Yeah, absolutely. It is literally just a bedroom up here. There's room for my closet, which is good, but it's definitely, yeah, it's mostly bed, bed loft. <laughs> yeah, it's quite nice how you have built in the hanging clothes storage up here as well. Yeah, I like having that open look for it. And originally we were planning on kind of putting something there, but I wanted it to be open to downstairs as well. And so I'm grateful that there is space for a closet here and having it there actually works quite perfectly. So how long have you been living in the tiny house now? I moved in in the middle of February, so I guess six months now. And how are you finding yourself adjusting to tiny house life? I love it. I, yeah, I'm so happy. I look around, it, especially like when you build something that comes from your heart with the design, then it just feels so cool to be in something that you had in your head and then all of a sudden it's actually your living environment. And having lived in the house already now for six months, if you were to redesign anything or change any elements in the home, what would it be? I really think I wish I had gone an extra two feet just to allow for a wood stove to have an alternative source of heat. But other than that, I don't know if I actually needed a washer and dryer, but other than that, I can't really yeah, I can't think of anything that I would really, really change. So not utilizing the washer and dryer, what are your alternatives? I mean, it's funny, I actually have a fire pit out there with um, a pot of water on it and I've been washing my clothes like that. Properly old school. <laughs> Properly old school. Um, doing my dishes out there. Yeah, I'm like fully immersed in the off-grid life right now. So living tiny has taught me that I'm really able to do anything, that I am actually self-sustainable. We talk about being self-sustainable, but actually being out here in the middle of winter in minus 20, I was like, okay, I'm doing this. And I gotta get up and run the generator and I gotta make sure things don't freeze. And it just made me feel like a bit of a badass to be honest with you. <laughs> and of course, it really reminded me about what's important. And it's just been this really beautiful experience because I do essentially feel like I'm outdoors. I guess you would consider it kind of like glamping or so they say, but you have all the features of a home. So you're able to really just be immersed in your environment. And I just can't speak highly enough about my experience here. And of course, it's exactly my personal taste and style. So there's that piece too when you wake up in the morning, it's like, this is my home that I made and I was able to afford to do that. And now can we talk about budget? What was the cost of building this home? Yeah, so I think my budget when I started was around like $60,000 and then it definitely went up with some really important things that I don't regret installing like the in-floor heat and um, my snake fridge and <laughs> those kinds of things but um, it ended up being around $80,000. Jess, this is such a beautiful home that you've created for yourself. I love the style and I love how much of yourself you've actually built into the space. So thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thank you so much for coming. This really is just such a beautiful home. You can really see that for Jess, all of her hard work in the design process has really paid off and she now has a home that really meets her needs. What's even cooler though, is that in many ways, it's pushed her outside of her comfort zone. It's allowed her to connect with nature and learn so much more about what she is capable of as a human being. And there is nothing more in life that we can ask for than that.